I'm tying a very popular dry fly pattern today. This is an elk hair caddis. These flies have been around for a long, long time. I'm not certain exactly when, I think it's Al Toth first came up with the pattern. I didn't really do any research simply because it, it's such a well-known fly. I mean, this is something I think most fly fishermen and women who get into fly fishing, especially for trout, have fished these and they're aware of this pattern. And I just wanted to tie it to show you how they're put together. This is by no means historically accurate, um, but it is how I have fished this and tied this and taught this for many, many years. Lots of different variations to these, so I suggest you look up other articles and other videos. But this is just a basic elk hair caddis, and I'll get started tying. get started with the elk hair caddis by having my hook and vise. This is a Mustad R50. It's just your standard dry fly hook. This is in a size 10. I debarb the hook and then I'm going to attach my thread. The thread I'm using a Uni 8 aught in brown for this. That's simply because of the overall color scheme of the fly. Some people will actually even use a fluorescent red or orange on this to add kind of a little bright spot at the front but you can whatever color thread you want to use for the overall color scheme you're going for the fly i'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook advance my thread back and i'm going to advance my thread pretty much to the point of the hook before i actually get to tying this whole fly there's something i want to show you I've mentioned in a number of videos when working with dry fly hackles, a technique in terms of tying these in. For the elk hair caddis, I'm again using some barred ginger dry fly hackles. And I've often mentioned, I will use this one. No, nope, I got another feather here that I can use, which will demonstrate this very well. I'm not, for this demonstration, I'm not concerned about the length of the barbs here. As a matter of fact, I'm glad that they're longer. They're going to show you what I'm, I'm trying to point out. Let's just say I'm going to tie this in, and this is going to be the hackle that I'm going to use for my elk hair caddis. A lot of people will either just tie in the end, or they'll sometimes just trim off some of these barbs like this. Gives them an added tie-in anchor, those barbs working their way in under the thread and everything. But here's the problem that you run into. With this tied in back here, I've actually just lashed down some of the base of these barbs right here. So now, when I start to wrap this hackle forward, you'll notice what happens is that I end up with some barbs sticking out the back. It didn't do that as well as I would like. So I'm going to wrap this back down. Probably because I am used to making certain that I don't do this. So I'm going to intentionally wrap this down so that I have, as you can see, more of the base of those barbs wrapped in here. Because what I want to demonstrate is, as you are wrapping this hackle in, notice these barbs here are trapped pointing rearward, almost like a tail. Now, if your fly has a tail on it, and, and that's no big deal, fine. If it doesn't, like um, say you're doing a Catskill dry fly, an Adams or a Cahill or something like this, you don't want these sticking out over the body. You want them coming out nice and perpendicular from the hook shank right as you're wrapping that in. So we want to make certain we're not wrapping the base of any of those barbs in so they're trapped going rearward. So how do we do that? Well, that's what I pointed out in a number of videos, and I will demonstrate again here. 
as well as when I tie the hackle in for the elk hair caddis that I'm going to do. And I'm going to trim this feather off here. So I'm now starting with a nice fresh butt end to this feather. What we're going to do is we're going to stroke out about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch of the barbs on that rachis. I'm going to trim right at the end here, maybe about an eighth of an inch. I just want a half a dozen, five on each side, maybe. These are still going to be my anchors. But these in front of it, I'm going to peel these off. So now I can tie in where that anchor is at. I can tie that in, get my body, my thread trapping that down to the end of the body right here, come back forward, and you'll notice I now have bare rachis right here. That has the advantage that when I wrap this in forward, notice I don't have any barbs that are trapped underneath. The first couple wraps are just getting that rachis on there, but all my subsequent wraps, the barbs are 90 degrees to the hook. And in the case of the elk hair caddis, this is kind of what we're looking for. Again, these are longer than what I want, but it helps demonstrate just what I want to, to show you. So leave a little bit of that rachis, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or so bare when you tie these in when you need those barbs to come out nice 90 degree angle from the bend of the hook. So I will unwrap all of this. And make certain I have all of that feather out of there, I do. And I'm gonna leave my thread just past the point of the hook here. I'm going to tie in a wire for our elk hair caddis first. The wire, I'm using a Danville fine gold wire. Tie this in and anchor that down almost the length of the body. And then I'm going to tie in my hackle. Now I've chosen again another barred ginger hackle here. But these are just about the length of the gap of the hook. They're a little bit short, but when I get the dubbing on there, it's going to push those out just a little bit. Again, I'm going to trim about a sixteenth of an inch or so of those barbs off the very end of that. And then I'm going to pull about another sixteenth of an inch of those barbs off above that anchor. So now I can get that anchor in, get my thread all the way back to the end of the body. I'm going to advance it forward just to collect that down as well as that wire and then come back to put in my dubbing. The elk hair caddis is a very simple fly. It has just a, a thin body of dubbing here, a hackle on it and a wire to reinforce that, and then it's the elk hair wing. For hackle, I'm just going to use a, this is a super fine dubbing Wopsy product. You could use a high and dry or something like that. If you don't have any of that, use an Antron. Use, use what you have. The bodies on these can be many different colors. A lot of times they are a cream color, a light cream color, like a light Cahill or something. I'm using an amber super fine dubbing. But there is um, a version of this, an apple green dubbing and body that is very popular. I do not need a big bulky body on this and I'm not actually even looking for a taper on this. All I want to do is just cover up the hook shank and that wire. So I'll get about a three or four inch dubbing noodle, start applying that right at the back, bring that forward and as you can see, it's not big and bulky. Other people will tie these with a little more bulk to them. That's up to them. I mean, it really is up to you if that's what you want. Make certain you're staying a good eye length behind the eye of the hook. At this point, we're going to wrap our 
hackle in. A common mistake in doing Elkhair Caddis, in my opinion, is people put a lot of wraps of this hackle in. This is not the, the a Caddis only has six legs. And you're not looking for these to support this in the surface film as, as that much because you have the elk hair on it to support it. So I get about four, maybe no more than five wraps. I'll get one at the back here and then two, three, four, that's it, five right there. And that's about it. You really don't need much more than that. If you prefer, and if that's the way you like it, then by all means, go ahead. But like I said, it isn't these hackles that are keeping this as much in the surface film as it is the elk hair. Wrapping those in, I'm now going to wrap in, I'm going to counter wrap that rib in. And I'm going to put this in in a more open spiral. Not that open. Because I want this to just go over that rachis. So I'll probably get, if I got five wraps in there, I'm going to get about four of that wire. Don't worry if it traps any of those down. It is not going to affect the fishability of this fly. The wire is there to reinforce the hackle. That's it. It's not weight. It's a dry fly, so you don't want to add any weight to it. So it is simply there to help to reinforce it. So I'll fatigue that off. Bring my thread back. And still, I'm a good eye length behind the eye of the hook. Now we'll put our wing in. And the wing on the elk hair caddis, as it says, is generally made out of elk hair. You can tie these in a large size. I've tied these in a size six or even four and use deer hair and thrown them around for smallmouth around here. But we're going to stick with some deer hair. This is a dark elk. You Often it's, it's a light elk that is used, but I'm going to go with this darker elk. It does not have to be a huge clump of deer hair or, excuse me, elk hair. But... When working with a hair like this, often you're better off getting a little bit extra out that you think you need because you can always thin it out. If you don't have enough, generally you just have to get another clumping start over. So I've got maybe a half a pencil right here in diameter. I'm going to put that in my stacker. Stack that up and get those tips nice and even before I tie this in. i to clean this up. I've got a few of them. The hairs kind of got turned around somewhere in the process or, or the tips got broken off. So as you can see, some of these I've got the tips are kind of broken off. You can either just leave those if you want, or you can peel those out. I'll peel that out. Once you have your wing all set the way you want it, we're going to tie this in. Generally, the wing is going to be as long as the bend of the hook. I'm going to pop these in the stacker again just for a couple more taps. That's going to get all of those a little bit more even. They kind of slid in my fingers there. So I only want the tips of these to be about back to the back of the bend. I got one hair that's sticking out. I can't seem to grab it. There we go. So now, again, I want these back to about the bend of the hook. I'm going to 
get my fingers on this where my tie-in spot is, and I'm going to stroke this back, double-checking that. Then I'm not putting it straight down onto the fly and, and trapping any of these hairs down. So I'm going to slide that in here. And I le like to leave all of these on here, and I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm going to put one, two wraps around here, pinching hard with my left hand so it does not spin or flare. I'm going to start wrapping that in tighter and tighter. This 8 aught thread, you can break it. You might go to a 6 aught if you want, um, or even like a 70 denier ultra thread, a little bit stronger. But I like to leave all this in because at this point, I'm going to fold this back, bringing my thread right underneath all that hair up to behind the eye. I'm going to build the head. And this is going to finish the fly as well as provide a little bit of a dam to kind of prop up some of that hair. And this is just how I do it. Other people, they'll finish theirs off a little different than me. And that's fine. It's however you want to and what works for you, in my opinion. But by leaving all of those hairs attached, it makes the next step much easier. Because what I want to do is all of these hairs here, I'm going to trim these down. Caddis have a very much a kind of tent-shaped wing. And they have a little head. The whole body profile is kind of pointed down towards the head. So I'm going to take all of these butt ends here, collecting those in my hand. I'm going to hold those steady and try not to get any of that wing in there. And I'm going to get my scissors in here at about the angle of the, the wing with the end of it just right here about to the eye and just cut those all off at an angle like that. Some people will, after they have anchored the hair in right here, they'll do that step and then they'll wrap the thread forward through these butt ends and it helps to anchor it down just a little bit more. But I find the technique that I just did real quick, very simple to do. If any of these have kind of gone around the bend a little bit, or I mean around the hook shank, then this hair, you can trim those out because you really do want those mostly just right up on the side. You don't, you don't want them covering up the sides really, but that does happen sometimes. Just snip a few of those out. It's not going to hurt it. So a little head cement, and I'm going to put head cement all on these thread wraps right here and down into that head to soak that up real well. That is a basic elk hair caddis. Great, great little dry fly pattern. Caught many trout on this, as well as some panfish and smallmouth on these in bigger sizes. Just a fun fun dry fly. You can mix up the colors, like I said, of the elk or and or deer hair and the hackles and so on for all kinds of different uh, fishing circumstances. So that is an elk hair caddis. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, and you're doing it wrong.